Friendship. It's one of the most basic human desires. Everyone wants that feeling of being appreciated by someone or just having a group to talk with and to mess around with. So how does Cuphead implement it in the show? Let's find out together. Season 2 of Cuphead just dropped on Netflix, and I want to talk about it. The Cuphead show started off as a fun, silly, episodic show based on the beloved video game characters, Cuphead and Mugman. As the show went on, a continuous plot began to form, between the devil trying to capture Cuphead's soul, which he feels he has the right to after the first episode of the series, and the topic of today's episode, Miss Chalice. <laughs> So charming. But you two will never charm your way into my cookie jar. We've been doing that dumb dance Chalice taught us for weeks. I tell you, Cuphead, she was messing with us. For context, in the season one finale, Miss Chalice was introduced as a charming, fun-loving, but also daring character. She, alongside Cuphead and Mugman, got into a lot of hijinks and mischief, which unfortunately for our two protagonists, ended up with them being imprisoned and Chalice walking free. Ever since then, they have felt betrayed trade, yet they still use the trick she has taught them, but with little success. Albeit not a perfect scene to start off with, I don't get why the episode had to start with Cuphead and Mugman trying to get cookies. I would have preferred if they were trying to get out of being grounded, because in the previous episode, where they escaped from prison, they were quote unquote grounded for life by Elder Kettle. They even bring it back once Chalice comes into the picture, so really it was a missed opportunity for a bit of continuity. Cuphead and Mugman are shown here to be in disagreement over Miss Chalice. Mugman is portrayed to be the logical and skeptical one, not putting her betrayal aside so easily, while Cuphead seems to be more forgiving, saying that she's a great friend and would never lie to them. Seeing as how she got you put in prison, I wouldn't put lying past her, but that's just me. Maybe that's your dear friend Chalice now. Hey, it's me, Chalice! I'm being chased by an angry mob! <gasps> angry mob? Gosh, Dallas. I'm sorry I got you tossed in the hooskow. Aside from a pretty good joke, the reconcilement of these three really shows off how they play off each other. Mugman doesn't quite buy into her apology so quickly, yet Cuphead has no problem helping her out. And in the joke I mentioned earlier, it's implied that he will usually take her side instead of Mugman. A small detail, but one that I do appreciate. Overhearing the situation about the angry mob, Elder Kettle tries to kick Chalice out, but as usual, she uses her charm to get out of the situation and even gets a cookie from him, much to the shock of Cuphead and Mugman. It shows that Chalice is the only person who has mastered the charming dance, and not anyone can just do it. It implies that she has something special about her that allows her to get away with whatever she wants. Well, up to a certain point at least. The slapstick humor of the show also shines with this joke. It's cartoony, it's in that classic 1930s way that the show and video game try to replicate. More on that later. Cuphead and Mugman try showing Chalice what they do for fun, which includes them hopping around on a goat, the goat hopping on them, and the two hopping on each other. Riveting stuff, I know. Chalice, seeing the pattern about to emerge, stops them, in favor of going to a dance contest that she's already entered them in. One problem, they don't have a way to get there. Nobody said anything about you two driving. Wait, what? <laughs> I like this scene a lot, because the show's personality really shines through it. Not a lot of shows are animated or written like Cuphead nowadays, and like I said before, it tries to emulate that 1930s vibe. That alone, however, is not enough for the show to be able to stand on its own two legs. Just like with the game, the gimmick that it has does not automatically make it good. Cuphead the show, not the character, has to properly use those assets in order to make the experience fun. So does the Cuphead show do that? Yeah, it really does. The animation is bouncy, cartoony, and creative, making it a fun watch visually. The art style is also very much accurate to the time period it wants to emulate. And I'm not even gonna go into the argument about how the art style has a sus history, because it's stupid. It doesn't matter. Stop it. In terms of voice acting, they also knocked it out of the park. With characters like our two protagonists, Chalice 
Alice, Alder Kettle, King Dice, The Devil, etc., you need voices to match their eccentric and unique personalities, and they do not disappoint. All the visual elements, and really everything that doesn't have to do with the story, is actually really well handled. So after a fun day out, winning the competition and all that, Mugman pulls Cuphead aside, literally grabbing him by his handle, which was a really subtle yet clever joke, and tells him that he's having doubts about Miss Chalice. Cuphead, I'm starting to wonder if there ever was an angry mob. <gasps> okay. <laughs> I admit it. I lied. I just wanted to hang out with you two porcelain dum-dums again. Okay, okay. So they do a nice little 180, and it seems like Miss Chalice was just missing her two friends and wanted to escape her loneliness. That's a nice plot point that works very well. Well, I don't know. Maybe that's your angry mob now. <laughs> Give us Give us well, the funny thing is, I was lying about lying about the angry mob. Uh, okay. To be honest, this part of the episode made zero sense. There's no reason for Chalice to lie about the angry mob here. Is it to show us that she has a problem lying? Because if so, that's kind of weird seeing as how she is never shown to be a compulsive liar. A con artist, sure. And you could even make the argument that being a con artist is lying, but in another form. But it's not like how they portray it here. If they were just trying to do a subversion joke, it wasn't really needed, mainly because we already have that. With Mugman saying that someone will be at the door, making you think that they won't be at the door, only for them to actually show up. It's way funnier than what they did with Chalice here. Maybe there's something I'm missing, or I'm just stupid. Both are equally likely answers anyway. Despite this, the comedy in the episode was pretty good. Another example is this joke here, where the lynch mob goes outside so as to not wake up Elder Kettle. I like it because Cuphead and Mugman, Mugman, wow. I like it because Cuphead and Mugman essentially do it out of fear, while the mob does it more out out of respect. It's also a sudden change in tone, which helps the delivery of the joke. Let's go outside. You were saying? Mugman tries to defend Chalice by saying that while she did con them out of money and a multitude of other things, but I'ma let it slide, her dancing did bring them joy, so it is a fair trade-off. However, that doesn't work in his favor, as the mob doesn't see it that way. In fact, without Mugman even knowing it, he created the perfect distraction for Chalice to make her escape, and now they become the main target. Fortunately for our boys, Chalice didn't actually flake like they had thought. Hey, my club! <laughs> Now, the reason why I like the friendship that these three have is that despite their conflicts, they do have each other's backs when push comes to shove. While Mugman did take a little bit more convincing than Cuphead, his defense of her in the end highlights my point very well. The two clearly appreciate the fun that Chalice brings to the group. She takes them out of their comfort zones and shows them how to have fun out of the normal things they get up to. They all bounce off each other very well, and they just act like a normal, in-tune friend group. It's crazy how a figure fictional mug has on average more friends than a lot of people on the internet, so that was charmed and dangerous. Highly recommend this episode and the Cuphead show in general for sure. Thanks for watching, click here to see my review of Hey Arnold, and take care.